Hey guys, Gavin here, and today I will be reviewing Insidious Chapter 1. So, it starts with family, the Lampert family, and, you know, life's going good. You know, they just moved into a house, and then suddenly Dalton gets into a coma. For, and three months pass by, you know, everything's okay. House is a little unsettling for Rose Byron's character, Renee, and, but, you know, she tries to pass it through. It's a tough three months after Dalton gets into a coma. Uh, Patrick Wilson's character, Josh Lampert, he has to work extra for the tests. Gets stressful, and Renee starts to see some unsettling things about the house. You know, there's... It's... She just starts to see some scary things. You know, the baby starts crying. Uh, sounds weird sounds everywhere for with the baby monitor she thinks she heard hears uh some man about to attack the baby and you know so she just starts getting freaked out and she starts to believe that the house is haunted patrick wilson on the other hand he his character josh believes that the house is not haunted and that you know maybe it's just too much stress on Renee to take care of the kids and so uh, everything is going fine and then one freaky night where all the doors open and uh, in the house and Patrick Wilson's character just goes around and eventually later on they decide to move out and they soon later on learn uh, that the house wasn't haunted, it was Dalton. And so we, then on, we learn, you know, how to, they go on an adventure to try to fix him. And that there's another world called the Further. And I'll delve, delve deeper into that stuff as once we go into the spoiler part of the review. But for this part, I will just say that Insidious was probably the best horror movie I've ever seen. I mean... Okay, I'm, I will be honest, I am getting into the horror genre, so I haven't seen a lot of horror movies. But, I mean, for a movie that was made 10 years ago, this movie was phenomenal. I loved the tension that it set. It was amazing. And I just felt tension in every moment. I thought there was going to be a jump scare. Oh my goodness. This set a new precedent for jump scares for me. You know, I kept expect The jump scares came at you at the times you least expected it. And they never came when you did expect it, at least for me, you know. And I really just was blown away with how horrified that I came out of this movie. This movie, if its number one goal is to terrorize the audience, it did its job. Because holy cow, I could not sleep easy for the, the next few nights after that movie. I had to have my doors open, you know, I got superstitious. This movie set a lasting impact, and I was, and that was amazing. And it wasn't just the movie. I mean, the the scary aspect of it. It was the storyline too. Unlike a lot of horror movies, this movie actually had a good storyline. Did not lack. Did not have that many plot holes. Uh, you know, it just. Oh my goodness, the story was pretty good actually. It really was, you know. And I would just. Uh, this just the elements just oh my goodness this movie was just mind-blowing I really felt connected to the characters and I honestly felt bad you know and I would give this movie a five no not a five excuse me I give this movie easily a nine out of ten to ten out of ten anywhere somewhere around between there I mean there's I mean I can't really name any flaws with this movie I mean there's, it did take a little slow of a build up, but that's okay because, you know, horror movie, it would have been come pretty lame and we would have gotten used to the jump scares had they started us off with all the horror stuff. So the build up was actually pretty good. I mean, a little slow, which was a little bit of an issue, but other than that, phenomenal. And exa I give this movie a 9 out of 10. Recommend it. Buy it on Blu-ray. Watch it on Halloween. You know, all that fun stuff. And now I'm going to delve into the spoilers. Okay, so...
If you have not seen this movie, uh, stop watching here because I'm going to go into spoiler talk. All right. So spoiler talk. Holy cow. I'm going to start off with the ending. My goodness. That was a pretty original end ending from, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who grew up watching a lot of movies, you know. And that, that ending was unlike anything I've really seen. I mean, like I said, I mean, I haven't really watched many horror movies. I know horror movies don't end in uh, good fashion, you know. There's always a bad ending to it, like Pet Cemetery and uh, 1922. Those are a few movies I've seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, holy moly, that ending though, where I, I totally did not expect that. I expected Patrick Wilson, his character, especially with how he was saying, I'm not afraid of you to the bride in black. I was expecting... Patrick Wilson, uh, Josh to be back in Patrick Wilson's character, not the bride in black. But then again, rewatching that scene before, we find out it's the black bride in black. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. That was, I mean, it does make sense because the bride in black was laughing as he was saying, I'm not afraid of you. So obviously the bride, bride in black knew that it was close to possessing his body. And so, yeah, that, I thought I was a pretty creative ending. I mean, holy cow, that, the first time I watched that, I, I wanted to scream as soon as she took the picture and then the black and black just, ah! you know, holy cow, that was intense. And then she, Renee's just like, oh. and then Patrick Wilson just comes and put, um, Josh comes and puts his, his hand on her. I'm right here. And it just ends right there. Holy cow. That movie had me hooked. It had me theorizing. It had everything you want an audience to do after a movie. It made you question what's going to happen. It made you want more. It made you... It did exactly what a movie needs to do. Like, you know, I feel like... I mean, now we're in 2020, so this was 10 years ago. But I mean, a lot of modern day movies... I'm, I'm, I haven't been impressed lately, honestly. A lot of movies lately have been lacking the luster that, you know, the 1980s to the earlier 2000s, I mean, earlier this decade movies have, have. You know, I feel like the movies we've gotten the last few years have lacked the luster. And that movie had the luster. You know, it, it had the good stuff. It, holy cow, that was a good ending. And, I mean, there was a lot of scary parts. I mean... A few that stood out to me were probably, you know, when they were looking through the photos and the bright and black was right there every time, getting closer and closer with the music behind it. Oh man, that was tense. And then the part where they were discussing and uh, Lorraine was Lorraine, uh, pa Josh's mom. I don't know the actor's name, sorry. Um, but anyways, she uh, was all I saw a face of fire, and then they look up gasp and the red de the lipstick face demon is right there that gave me a heart attack and oh my goodness that was great and then the the smiling family oh, don't get me started there that, that was back crap scary i mean i saw the trailer so i knew to expect it but i mean it wasn't as scary as when i saw in the trailer but i mean holy cow that was still good and i was watching it with my friends so they could bro but i mean Holy cow, this is definitely a good movie to watch, and, uh, oh my goodness, this movie was amazing, and I really thought that the lipstick face demon was a good villain, I mean, looked like Darth Maul from Star Wars, but I mean, I feel like, you know, they can use him later on down the road, and he's been just amazing, you know, I mean, I really liked how, I mean, he didn't really sell us short. I mean, Dalton did get a little away from him a little easily, but he was scary. And, you know, I mean, I've seen the other movies, but I'm not going to spoil anything uh, in case you guys haven't seen the other movies while watching this. But, I mean, he is probably one of my favorite villains in the series, and they did a good job with him. I mean, tiptoe through the, fil the tulips, holy cow, that, that scene was also scary with the boy running around. A lot of scary things about this movie, and it was great. And, uh, yeah, 
I mean, that, those were my finishing thoughts to it. It was just a great movie, good characters. Patrick Wilson did amazing as Josh. And Lynn Shea, holy cow, I cannot believe I haven't gotten to her yet, was amazing. I mean, she's obviously the MVP, of course. Her, She, Specs, and Tux are an amazing trio, and they made this movie pretty fun, too. It made it more interesting how she knew everything, and she was there, and... You know, it it was it sucked that she she got killed. I mean, I mean honestly, she was such a great character. I think they should have probably kept her, but I mean that was still a good ending in the end. Either way, it would have been okay. And yeah, I mean, I think every actor did a good job. A list actors easily. Uh, it was a good movie, and I hope you guys. I mean, you guys are watching the stars, so you guys probably watched it. Uh, what did you guys think of it? Just let me know down below. Uh, and I will come out with Insidious 2, Insidious 3, and Insidious 4 uh, reviews. And then I'll do an entire series ranking of my, the movie order I prefer. And yeah, I mean, Insidious, what did you guys think? Let me down below, comment down below, let me know. We'll see you soon.